Hello everybody and welcome to my next edition of Become my Become Unstoppable series. And today I've got a really amazing guest. Now this is Maria. She, Maria, she is an ADA. And she works with youth and she's going to tell us all about that when she comes on. So fingers crossed that the gods are going to be with us. Here she is. Hello, my lovely. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, technology's working. That's always a. That's always a. <laughs> it's always good. Always good. So welcome to my become unstoppable series. Um, and thank you for joining me. And in fact, for stepping in for me actually at the very last minute because another guest that I had couldn't make it any longer. So. Thank you so much for that. So we didn't want to let our um, guests down this week by not having one. <laughs> so welcome, welcome. So would you like to just let everybody know who you are and what it is you do, my darling, please? So I'm Marie Herbert and I'm ADHD youth coach. Um, should I give you a bit of background? Oh, please. Yeah, so I've been in education for nearly 30 years, um, mostly to do with special needs. Um, I always sort of veered towards working with the children that are in the classroom who are I could tell had more going on inside you know problems troubles challenges and those were always the children that I reached out to and now with a late diagnosis of ADHD age 49 I kind of get why that was you know I think I was mm -hmm. choosing those children that like me um have those challenges that are associated with ADHD. So what do I do? Um, so I work with young people aged 14 to 35, um, which is quite a wide definition of you. <laughs> I like that about young as well, but, I like that. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's because your brain is developing still and some most people, their prefrontal cortex is developed by mid twenties, but some people it can even go up to early forties. And the whole thing about ADHD is that's the part of the brain that is a little bit behind compared to your peers. I still feel like mine is developing, <laughs> but it must develop because I'm 51. It can't still be developing, but um, sometimes I have the emotional reactions of a toddler, which is kind of, you know, what ADHD is a lot more emotional than people realise. It's a lot more about emotions. Mm. So, um, yeah, so I, I will be. Um, ADHD um, in action here. My, my thoughts, your, my thoughts will go off in different directions. I might um, suddenly completely lose track. Um, so just to warn you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Be back if that happens. Brilliant. Right. So you might have to remind me what I was just saying. So what I was saying was about what I do. So yeah. So I coach. I coach young people. Um, and the coaching that I do is kind of transformative rather than strategies will come into it, but the strategies will be very much personalised and it'll come from the young people that I work with. It's not me saying, oh, you've got problems with organisation, try this, try that. It doesn't work like that. We sort of go a lot deeper. Um, and because I'm ADHD youth coach, I kind of expand that. So um, that includes working with schools, because obviously schools work with young people with ADHD so um, training in schools and I would like to go into coaching teachers as well um, and then the other side of it is working with parents um, especially if their young person doesn't want to have um, coaching um, but it's more if the children are too young for coaching because you need for the type of coaching that I do it's quite a self-reflective um, coach and you need that maturity um so if the children aren't able you know to engage in that way then working with the parents is really really effective so i do that as well but i would like to i think i am going to expand into some sort of lead up work with younger children and um, connecting with them and working on that self-esteem because mm. with adhd that's a massive that's a massive factor yeah and did i i'm adhd i, I have mentioned yeah. that haven't i yeah <laughs> brilliant and, and i think that's interesting and we'll talk about that a lot more in a moment but before i forget yeah <laughs> i want to ask you like i ask all my guests uh -huh. on my become unstoppable series is 
So Marie, what does being unstoppable mean to you? So it took a while for me to come on here because every time you mentioned it, I kept saying I'm not unstoppable enough yet. <laughs> as well I'm like, yes you are Get <laughs> actually unstoppable doesn't mean that you've reached your final destination does it no and um, i think i will always be striving to you know do more and be more so in that way i'm unstoppable in terms of my business i'm really driven by wanting to help other people who young people in particular get them on the right track where they believe in themselves and um, they don't see their differences as negative and help them see their differences so often the narrative can be completely switched and those differences can be a positive and I really want that for um, for young people I just had a pop-up on my phone that's completely distracted me there we go <laughs> Um, and it's, inter it's interesting though because when like you said a minute ago that I kept saying to you come on come on she kept saying no I'm not ready I'm not ready and I went you are so ready because it's like you say it's not I'm still growing all the time everyone we should all be growing anyway yeah. regardless of what journey you're on that's part of life right mm -hmm. our mind wants to keep growing it loves to learn and already you know, we, we met in our business coaching world. Um, we haven't had any massive, great in-depth conversations, but we've met and we, we connected, didn't we? And we um, knew that there will be a connection for us there. But I knew straight away that the work that you were doing, you are already unstoppable, but it's about what else can you do? And that's what you're saying, isn't it? It's about what else can you do with your kids, with the, the parents to help them to become unstoppable. Yes. So yeah? yeah it's kind of like, like a two-way thing yeah. is it's for us to be and to because i'm the same with my clients i don't say that i'm i, I do say i'm unstoppable because i feel like i am but it doesn't mean i don't want to learn anymore i'm learning all the time yeah but but my my love is working with my clients so that they can uncover the things that are holding them back so they can become unstoppable and it doesn't get better than that yeah and i can imagine you feel the same when you're working with your children don't you when you see the impact that you you've had on them yeah yeah i'm definitely on a mission and um yeah there are amazing moments when you help a young person um see themselves in a different in a different way so for example i had um, a young person who talked about we were talking about self-esteem and they were saying that one reason they sort of judge themselves negatively was that they'd never been become brilliant at anything that they've tried mm -hmm. lots of things but they'd never stuck at it and and that's very typical adhd yeah. uh, i'll come back to that in a second in terms of me but um when i flip the narrative around that say well isn't that brilliant that you've tried loads and loads mm -hmm. of different things got all those amazing skills you know that is that is valuable in a different way to be mm -hmm. in one thing and you can just see the you know the face just changes and you know the penny drops and that's just so powerful um sort of similarly with parents i know there's different there's different schools of thoughts about adhd coaching that you don't have to be adhd to to be a good adhd coach and i'm sure that's true but for me um i love it when i can give parents some insights into what might be happening um, with their child because sometimes things can seem and this is the whole thing about ADHD people think well why don't you just why don't you just stop that why don't you just do this differently and it just doesn't work like that and having somebody who's a coach who gets that I think mm -hmm. is really valuable for the young people but also for the parents so I had a parent saying about the difficulty their child had um, with choosing and uh, she would get it get a choice down so like in a shop for example down to two choices and couldn't understand why he couldn't make that choice mm -hmm. and i could completely empathize with that my my children hate it when we go out for a meal because um they they just dread it when the somebody comes up and asks to take our order and they know that i'm going to be sat there even though i might we might have been sat there for half an hour <laughs> when it comes to actually making that choice it is just so hard and you know i won't go into mm. i won't go into the ins and outs of that but um 
it is a thing, you know, and so I completely get why that child can't make the mm. choice. At the chocolate yeah. my, my theory in terms of the restaurant is that if I, if I knew I was going to the same restaurant the next night, I'd probably be okay because I'd know that I can have the one choice one night and the, and the other choice next. But yeah, th these are the, the different ways that an ADHD brain. Yeah. And, and I'm sure, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not, obviously I've heard of ADHD and I know roughly what it is, but I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I'm going to ask you in a minute to give us a little bit of an outline. Um, but I just wanted to tell you a very quick story. <laughs> So I've like worked in the corporate world for 35 years, right? And I've been used to managing multiple projects and doing multiple things, right? So I've always been like spinning a hundred plates, da -da 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 -da. not always a finisher, I've realized lately, um, but I can do lots of different things and I'll eventually get them done. I can also get annoyed with myself because I can't switch off very well. So when I've tried to en engage in meditation and things like that, um it's yeah my mind's still going um anyway my 23 year old son who's at uni at the moment he called me a couple of months ago and he went mum please don't have a go at me so it's like the worst nightmare and oh my god what have you done and he went look um i've been doing some research and i've been looking at all adhd and all different i think he called it add um and he said and I think I've got it. And I went, right, okay, why do you think you've got it then? So my, my, my instant reaction inside was, oh, for God's sake, why do you need a label, right? That, if I, God's honest truth, right? Anyway, he went, look, mum, that's, that's why he said to me, don't be mad yeah. at me. <laughs> you probably knew I was going to react like that, right? So I said, okay. So I stayed quite calm. Okay, tell me why then. So he, he said, well, I've done lots of tests. I've done all this, I've done all that. And okay, so what he said, well, what I do is this, this, and I went, yeah, I'll do that. Anyway, he reeled off loads of different things, and I went, yeah, so I'll do that. And he went, Mum, I think you've got it. And I was going, oh, don't be so ridiculous. But every time since you said it, it's kind of really been playing on my mind yeah. now. And <laughs> so, it's hereditary. Um, so the whole thing about labels, um, so I get that um, people can be feel negative about labels they don't want to feel that it's any sort of restriction but um, I would say not having a label and not having that knowledge about yourself can actually be really almost dangerous um, because you yeah not understanding yourself you know it's understand it let's flip it understanding yourself is, is, is always got to be a positive um, it doesn't change the label doesn't change who you are it just gives you that opportunity to understand yourself better and to harness your strengths and tackle your, your challenges mm. um, and i and i actually said to him okay because he got really upset when he was telling me so i thought okay so <laughs> i i was very good and i after that i was like okay i said well what do you what what do you want to do about it then now you think you've got it and he went i don't know he said but I just, and that's when he got upset. He said, I just feel so relieved. Yeah. Oh, I understand myself a little bit more and I don't feel so hard on yeah. myself because there was times when he would like really be really hard on himself about how he was. And um, yeah, um, um, we haven't, I haven't really spoken to him in massive detail since then, or on and off, but not in massive detail. And I said I was coming on with you today and I asked him whether he was okay if I shared that story and he said yeah but this like yeah <laughs> I know, I, you know I say I put posts about it diagnosis is like the start of um, a journey really obviously um, a diagnosis a formal diagnosis gives you access to um, medical um, intervention as in drugs and I have had 18 months worth of ADHD medication currently I'm not on medication and I wouldn't say that I'll never go back on it but i've got luxury at the moment being able to um organize my life around adhd i think when you're trying to fit into an external world that might not be um that adhd friendly i think the medication definitely helps um and i've lost track of what i was going to say now well, um, what, what would you say to anybody then who feels that they 
might have it or their children have got it or you know worried about it what would be your first thought of all well for children um anybody who's still at school to get um a diagnosis through cams um you you need school to be on board and that and that can be tricky because um i think in primary school you know there's a tendency to accommodate quirks and individual needs and trying to ascertain what's personality what's adhd and also the massive massive thing that schools are still not really mm. and thing is how kids mask mm. um, school so that's them fitting in and that's the whole thing about adhd actually that is really challenging and if you don't have a diagnosis and you don't recognize it in yourself you spend your whole life trying to fit in and you know i i thought that's what everybody did and just other people did it better than i did it didn't get to them so much but you constantly feel like you're on the um on, on the periphery of things really you're always trying to understand and um fit in um and that can impact you in your adult life then as well, can't it? Because a lot of the clients that I see, maybe some of them are ADHD and I'll look out for it a little bit yeah. maybe now. But um, well, give away, give away. So I, I had like 30, and this is fairly typical, 30 plus jobs because you get bored. <laughs> mm. um, you get bored or you, you know, you can't progress in the way that you know. I used to sit in um, senior um, leadership meetings in schools and be really frustrated with myself because in the moment I just couldn't process couldn't engage with what was being said and then I'd leave the meeting and you know the next half, half an hour my brain would be flooded with loads of ideas which I'd you know rattle off on a, an email which probably wouldn't get read um, and these are sort of accommodations that people can put in place as a, an adult knowing um, so at work, knowing in a meeting in advance what's going to be discussed so that you've got that time to tune in and that accommodation that, OK, I might not be able to engage in the moment in the meeting, but I will um, respond with an email and, and people knowing that that's not just you, you know, ranting or venting or, I don't know, brain dumping. That is you know that is possibly how you need to process things and, and that's how to get the, the most out of you but when you don't have that knowledge about yourself you just get frustrated it's just frustrating mm. and you and you know you're sitting there not talking in the meeting and you know people are going to judge you for that um yeah. so yeah so n understanding yourself is um better it's just mm. yeah it's empowering mm. you know mm. and and that's what i want to instill in the young people i work with that self-advocacy you know in an ideal world you everybody would just embrace difference and you know i really feel passionately that that um we can all learn from each other um if we've got that open-mindedness i think people are fearful um i think in schools as well that the adhd label i think people are fearful of it mm. like they assume it's a bad thing and um so don't want to go down that roots um almost like protecting the young person from getting a label when actually like i say it's it's actually something that can be really empowering um and it shouldn't be restrictive um mm -hmm. but a bit of um work to do really in getting people to see that so do you think um there it's becoming more and more common because people are talking about it now or just because there's more of it or no, i don't think it's because there's more of it i think it's just awareness has grown and the, yeah. the big area is in so there's three types of uh, adhd so the add that people refer to is one of those types we don't use that term anymore mm -hmm. so there's three types of adhd um there's the uh, predominantly hyperactive the predominantly inattentive and then the combined which is what i am mm -hmm. um, and the inattentive uh, side of it, the difficulty paying attention, well, say difficulty paying attention, the other flipping the narrative on that is that it's not a difficulty paying attention, it's that you pay too much attention to too many things. Right, so you lose the so plot. Yeah. yeah. Well, is, that, 
but you'll be having loads of the different ideas firing off at the same time so it's that side of things that people are more aware of now because particularly in girls who are just programmed socially to mask more and to fit in mm. a lot of that it's almost like well for me with combined um so the hyperactivity as well it's almost like i think of it as hyperactivity of the brain so you've got all this stuff going on inside that might look like from the outside like somebody's daydreaming or switched off or not bothering doesn't care when actually it's just that they're processing mm -hmm. so many other different ideas and like yeah. i said the emotional side of things as well is is um really big i can imagine it must be quite tra challenging as well in a relationship you know like a couple relationship i mean because if you haven't got a diagnosis and you're doing all of those things or some of those things that could get really frustrating for the other person yeah. couldn't it yeah but if you've got that diagnosis i guess you can almost go into that relationship going hi this is me but i do have this just so you know and these are the traits just so you know and then that person kind of gets to understand i'm sure they probably do still get frustrated because they're only human yeah. right but, but at least you can go in there with that kind of warning i suppose yeah. isn't it um if for want of a better phrase i think for people who are neurotypical um it is it is hard and so for people in relationships and teachers as well if you don't experience something i think it is really challenging for people to get that that way of being can be a thing mm. and as a society i think we just need to really embrace Mm. yeah that just because it's not your experience it's it doesn't mean that an experience isn't valid and it isn't true and it's just having that openness and i guess a respect really for different experiences of the world and not to be judgmental mm. yeah and i think it's about them not feeling them being adhd sufferers not feeling that they're different it's just the people that don't have it or think or never even consider whether they've had it or not but then not accepting adhd into the world isn't it it's the other way around it's like yeah like you so i flip everything isn't it just to challenge adhd sufferers yeah. and yeah. Really, it's, it's yeah. super powerful, isn't it because if you think there's so many um famous people out there even or even people in our community that we know who are so so smart so so focused can deliver and do so much at once but they're probably on the spectrum right yeah so um i always say that the reason the world keeps turning and growing and developing is because of neurodivergence really so you know um whether that's dyslexia mm. um, bcd autism adhd because by definition you need people who see the world differently otherwise everything would just be the same wouldn't it yeah so people who have new ideas and i'm sure there's lots of people that have had an impact on the world who haven't got a diagnosis but probably are um neurodivergent mm. so really the message is then if you've got any concerns or you feel that you may be yeah. on the spectrum then go and get yourself tested then and where's the best place to do that so um so for a free diagnosis the route is cams for children um and um three or gp for adults mm -hmm. um for children it's supposed to be um single point of access is that what it's called um which is supposed to be that parents can refer but in reality if you don't have the school backing you you do encounter barriers um, going through school. yeah so sometimes i think it's a case of educating schools um as well about your child because I say at school often there can be lots of masking or, or teachers just assume because you know there's one teacher and a whole class full of young people they're not they're not going to especially at secondary school you've got literally hundreds of young people mm -hmm. that you're teaching you know it's going to be hard to get to know that person and that's that's one message that I want to get out to schools and teachers really is just that not judging being open-minded and if at all possible just having that chance to talk to a young person because they know what's going on in their brain and they often have the solutions as well um, and yeah. I've, I've diverted from the you were saying about um getting diagnosed so it's 
for children at school, I would say first pause call is talking to your school. Mm. Um, hopefully between you getting that understanding of the young person and for adults, it's it's GP. Obviously, you can go for private diagnosis as well, which is what I did. I mean, I was age 49 and I didn't have any more time to wait. You know, I had to wait two years and the GP actually said, you know, go for a private diagnosis. He would refer me, but, mm. you know, to, mm. to things. So that was a birthday present to myself. <laughs> so what difference has it made to you then being diagnosed? Because obviously you're still the same person and you're still doing the same things. Well, I think I am the same person in a way because, um, you know, like I say, my whole life I've been masking, trying to fit in, trying to be different to how I am. Whereas now I've kind of given myself permission to lean into who I am. Nice. So in, sometimes I think my symptoms have got worse, um, but it's because I'm not hiding them. Right. Um, so, um, you know, I'm lucky in the job that I do that I've kind of got a good excuse to do that <laughs> so what, what would you do so did you do ADHD before you were diagnosed no, no. I, I I found out the first the start of my journey was when I went on some training by the ADHD foundation because I, I started a new job at a school and I knew that there was somebody there who had ADHD that the school found difficult to meet his his needs and right. I thought I don't know that much. I know something about ADHD, but it's very, it was very stereotypical. Mm. And the, the training I went on, it was meant to be, I thought it was general ADHD uh, in schools training, and it was actually ADHD in girls. And literally, from when Tony opened his mouth talking, um, I, I just, yeah, my mouth just dropped. Because, right. I, I do that, I do that, I've got that, I, yeah, I say that. Since when is that? thing doesn't everybody do yeah. that you know what are you yeah. so a, this is the thing right because i don't know whether I, I, I probably won't get tested i don't, I don't know what i'm gonna do about it really but probably nothing but i did when i was talking to my son about it and i went but i've just spent my whole life living in that environment of work where it's like that all the time why can i not just have why can that just not be the learned behavior that i've picked up by doing constant you know, been in that corporate world for all that length of time, and that's what it was like. Yeah. So well, maybe do you think like that's the thing? Do you think it's possible that you, for for someone like me, maybe I have just got learned behaviour from repetitiveness, from doing that in that environment, as opposed to being on the spectrum, or is that just me kidding myself? So I think um, the thing is, so ADH, different ADHD traits. So there's this thing where people say that everybody's a little bit ADHD, mm. everybody's a little bit autistic. The thing is um, that when you have these neurodevelopmental conditions, they impact on your life. They get in the way of you living your life. And that's the difference. Right. Um, so for me, with, you know, 30 plus jobs, six plus um around six uh, postgraduate qualifications i constantly needed that stimulation and crave that new dopamine hit that i got from starting a new challenge something new so for you know maybe for you your brain met you know it could have been dopamine seeking in terms of enjoying having all those different things going on you it's interesting you said about not always finishing because that's very mm -hmm. much the thing that you start something new and it is actually seeing it through when the dopamine hit has worn off you know get end results um that can be that can be the challenge yeah um, definitely got that bit <laughs> so it's, it's it's like you know i would say it's it's when you're so for women in particular um so so anybody you can manage your adhd symptoms and as life progresses and becomes more demanding then the strategies that you've got in place um, might start to fall apart. So as your career develops, as your family grows, and then for women, it's hormones. Because the menopause. Yeah, yeah perimenopause, and your ho hormones drop. And um, and I should know which hormone it is. I'm going to say estrogen, but I don't know for yeah. definite. Um, but that impacts on your dopamine levels as well. So what was you know you might have been managing and and getting away with things really but when you have that shift then you know and i would say that's what 
happened to me. I started a full time job, perimenopausal, and yeah, everything just suddenly exploded. <laughs> it just fell apart, really, you know, and um, I got diagnosed with anxiety initially. Um, and when that didn't do the job, up, you know, I was on medication and then HRT and that still didn't do the job and that's when I, you know, that's when I reached the crisis point really, I think, you know, there's a difference, isn't there? Do you, do you carry on until you reach crisis point and then go and get a diagnosis and it's like in an ideal world that wouldn't happen but I think in reality it's almost like you need to get yeah. to for people yeah. to take it seriously. It's funny actually because I've had two independent conversations this week from two gentlemen who have just sort of said like I don't know what's going on with my wife she's just like she's just I don't know who this woman is and I went well she's probably going through the menopause but actually well, she probably is because they're that kind of age but actually it's something else to consider isn't it yeah there's like, like there's almost like three elements of it now really so you in in the menopause perimenopause and all that anyway you get heightened anxiety overwhelm mm -hmm. all, all the other symptoms like can't sleep and all that kind of stuff and then on top of that you know you might actually already have a well you might if you haven't been diagnosed you might be having all the adhd stuff going on as well when you're trying the doctor already is trying to give you antidepressants to fix mm -hmm. your menopause because it's anxiety because it's the same symptom yeah but actually it's not it's none of them isn't it you know so or a combination of all of them yeah and the, the the other thing to remember as well is that if you have adhd you've always had adhd so if if the symptoms do become more um significant as you're growing older you, you need to be able to look back on your life and and see actually oh yes that's why i did this that's why I did that so you know there's also I ran into a wall when I was 13 running after a ball because I was having thoughts about running into the wall <laughs> so I would say that was ADHD related yeah. I used to do certain lessons I used to keep my book in my bag because I just didn't want to concentrate in the lesson even though I was and because I was a high functioning student and I was you know achieved well I got away with things I used to do get fed up sitting in lessons so i used to pretend i had a music lesson and walk around the corridors and, and like <laughs> just get away with it really it's um i had a year off after a levels um started a uni course after one year I had a year out which was really random well i, I went yeah i won't go into that now but that was that was a whole really random thing changing my degree while i was out there i, I was i was an au pair in switzerland change my degree while I was out there you know there's all these things that when you look back look, on it now you go oh that's yeah, why that's why yeah so if you you know if your childhood went smoothly and there were no issues then it might be that it is just all about menopause but yeah, yeah you can look yeah. back or think. the, the behaviour in the life that you've been doing yeah but also I think it's important to remember that society now is just switched on all the time isn't it there's always something going on social media tv computers life it's just on the go constantly and our brains can't cope with that because back in the day when we were out hunting and everything that's all they needed to worry about wasn't it just worrying about whether they was going to get their food or whether they was going to get eaten by something now our brains are just in overload 24 7 really there's just so much stimulation they, I don't think our brains have caught up with society and, and the way of life. Yeah, and that's that's hard for the ADHD brain because um, all those stimulations are all dopamine hits, so it's mm. easy to get stuck and uh, distracted. Um, so yeah, you have to be quite um, aware of of the pitfalls and and you know that sort of thing, sort of thing you dress through. So once you know you've got it and been diagnosed with it and you understand your limitations your pitfalls your superpowers so let's you know the good and the bad with it what sort of techniques would you be showing people to manage that in their life so that so first first, first yeah first of all i'd say that getting that understanding is something that's probably you know i'm probably going to be doing that for the rest of my life whether if i'd started earlier whether i'd be at um 
more of an advantage. I don't think, I think it's going to be changing all the time, isn't it? So mm. you have awareness, but I don't think you have like a complete understanding of all of those things ever. I think it's being conscious of it and being alert to um, your behaviours and the way your mind works. And it's, it's um, the way the coaching works is you, you kind of deconstruct things. So you're taking things apart and like I say, it's just that you don't assume it's, it's knowing that you need to put scaffolding into place for things that other people can just do automatically. Happen. Mm-hmm. It's just a different mindset. And um, just to say, you know, although I use my ADHD to help with my coaching and help with that empathy, one person's ADHD is different to another person's ADHD. You've met one person with ADHD or one person with autism, you've met one person. You know, it's so different. And that's why the coaching is so valuable as well, because mm. it's not a case of just picking up a book and, and looking at strategies. It's looking at that person's individual. Yeah, yeah get it. I get it. And the way that- so in, in the work that you do with people then, um, how, well, actually, I'll rephrase that. So in your business, how can people find you? How can you help people? Because I don't know, obviously, you're locational based to a point, but do you do anything online? Yeah, it's all online. Well, I have got a base as well for the local community, but uh, yeah, more so online. I, I want that reach, really. Mm. I'm prepared to travel for schools um, as well. Um, so, yeah, so ADHD Youth Coach is uh, my website, dot com. And I'm on LinkedIn and Instagram, but yeah, the um, so what I offer initially is six week or six session package. Mm-hmm. And typically, we make a lot of impact. I think I think because of that, having somebody else give you permission to be you, it, it's quite empowering and it has a, an impact straight away. Mm-hmm. So often there's quite a shift even just in three sessions they're quite short focus sessions are only half an hour each um but yeah so those three sessions usually are weekly and then the other three sessions we space out a little bit more compared you know depending on what somebody needs and then there's the option for um sort of monthly top-ups just to because obviously young people in particular you know life is just all about change Mm. isn't it yeah. you've got your college you've got your uni you've got your first job got that so those two all right as well there's so much and yeah. actually with each transition that's the potential pitfall mm. for some hd for things to go wrong so it's good to have that um sort of monthly top up to just mm. preempt and deal with things as they as they come up and are they on a one-to-one or are they in groups yeah at the moment they're one-to-one mm. i think young people i don't think um i want to do group coaching for parents because i think that's having that support for parents is really valuable and and you know knowing i th- I just think that's yeah that that's empowering to know that you're not the only one and you're prepared to learn from each other whereas young people i think are a little bit more protective and vulnerable and you know for the coaching for them anyway that one-to-one i think is mm it's essential really to make sure that the strategies that and the yeah is yeah. personal to them but i guess once they're up and running and they're you know living their best life and they want to then then i guess they could go to that group yeah. level if they want to yeah. be in a like, like-minded community or something yeah yeah because it is really it is mm. uh, i went to a conference a, a few weeks ago and being in a room full of other people mm who were neurodivergent it, it was lovely <laughs> to be in a place where you knew it was okay to interrupt and be a little bit quirky and people not to raise any eyebrows um, <laughs> <How rude is she? laughs> to go and have your own space for half an hour for you, you know all these things you know it's so nice actually um just feeling that acceptance and oh, understanding oh amazing i love that but anyway we've been on here quite a while now okay you need to uh, stop talking we, <laughs> <laughs> you did say that there wouldn't be an issue didn't you which is amazing. Yeah. i'm so glad actually because i haven't had one of those interviews yet when i'm like okay what am i going to say next <laughs> but it's been really really interesting and i'm going to certainly be a lot more 
open to finding out more um, because when I have clients come to me, I, I, if I was to think back on some of them, I'd probably go, oh, do you know what? I reckon they probably do because of this is what they did and stuff like that. Maybe it's something I should ask them up front. <clears throat> not, yeah, not, 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 not as a, I'm not going to work with you if you've got it or anything like that, but just as an informational type of point. Maybe just, just an open question about um, attention or, um, you know, finding it difficult to concentrate. Mm. Um, I kind of feel like there is an ADHD magnet um, that, that is at work, you know, and that's that can happen when you're waiting for the tube, <laughs> somebody random just comes and you start having this conversation or in the supermarket and I just think, oh, I think, oh, you could be ADHD. <laughs> it's just <laughs> I but, that. But but when I meet people now, it's analysing them because I can't help myself. You're doing the same, aren't you, with your ADHD? <laughs> I, would never, I would never sort of probably suggest it myself, but maybe just getting them thinking about mm. the yeah. concentration and attention. Like, like you say, the concentration would be a good one. Yeah, actually, funny enough, I do have that on when I get them to feel when we go through the intake form. I've got a list of loads and loads and loads of things. And I do have concentration on there, but mm. I don't think I've ever really focused on it. Uh -huh. on, yeah, concentrate, yeah. But maybe if yeah. I was to focus on, I focus on, well, what I mean by that is this, then that would be a good idea. Yeah. And keep in mind as well that, um, you know, although ADHD has the word deficit in it in terms of attention actually it's probably attending to too many things so it's yeah. like do you have lots of thoughts do you, do you and the other thing as well in terms of concentration is that um, with adhd you can have periods of hyper focus which is where you just actually could sit i could sit at my desk for 10 hours and not if i didn't have children to worry about would happily not eat <laughs> or you know mm. just because you know if you actually, <laughs> You, yeah. yeah, and I, I actually love those um, those times when that happens because you get loads of work done. But, <laughs> but then you have, then you have to, to days off to really recuperate. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be kind to yourself the next day. Then no. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in terms of uh, concentration, it can there can be different aspects to it. And that that is when the superpower comes in, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a superpower when you can do that. It does mm -hmm. feel like a superpower, but then, like I say, you have to be kind to yourself and yeah. recognize. Oh, that's no fall, fall out, fall off the perch the other side, can't you? So I imagine, like, if you're a writer or something like that, and you've really got to be hyper focused to get that deadline done, something like that. That is a real. I love to do writing. I really, I really love writing. I spend too much time writing for social media, really, and I would love to write a book. But that, for me, I've got to. Um, I need to get the routine trying to establish routines with ADHD so that you're removing the uncertainty and the question around things. That's, that's something I need to do. So mm. yeah, I will try. I'm going to try and do that. Try is a lame word, love. Try is a lame word. If you want to do it, <laughs> you do it. Yeah. It, it, it is. Maybe it's a fear factor and I'm not committing to establishing that routine that will mm. do that. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. I don't I never thought I'd be writing a book, but I am, so who knew? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm kind of writing it, sort of, but um, yeah. it's taken up so much more of my time than I anticipated. But anyway, anyway, anyone who's watching this video, like after we've finished this live, please, please also get in contact with Marie if you've got any ADHD questions or yeah, more information. Go on our website. Um, I will tag Marie in this video anyway so that you're and also on our Canva post, you can see her. So anyone who's been watching this, thank you so, so much. It's really great to see you on here. We hope you've enjoyed it. Um, Matthew has anyway. Thank you, Matthew. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a joy. And I will really be thinking about this a lot more myself, actually, and looking out for that when I've got, well, in, in life yeah. in general, not just with yeah. my family, but in life in general, because I'm probably being guilty of going, oh, for God's sake, <laughs> you know. I know, I would have done. I would have done. Yeah. Um, so apologies to anyone who I might have done that to in my life. But I didn't know. I didn't know. Um, and lots of people don't, do they? And that's the yeah. point. The more awareness. This is why I really was excited about having you on today because it's such a hot topic these days, which is great. Um, and it impacts so many people. 
and we've all got people in our lives if it isn't us there's someone who is suffering from it's it and make it to look look at them as well isn't it and go do you know what i think i might get them a little bit more and yeah. just have a little bit of patience yeah and it's still underdiagnosed and the suffering only comes in probably if they're not diagnosed once you diagnose yeah. power <laughs> oh brilliant thank you so much darling and i look forward to seeing you again at our next gold circle event yeah um, and thank you again, everybody, for watching and anyone who watches this. I am now, I haven't launched it yet, but I'm now almost ready to launch my YouTube channel. So all of these videos are all going to go up on there as well. So they'll be easier to find. They're all on my Instagram, but they'll all be in one place. So I'm really excited for that. I'll let you know when that's going to go live. But that's with me because I've got to do some bits to it before I can do it. <laughs> um, yes, prioritisation, darling. Prioritization. Yeah. But <laughs> thanks again, again, everybody. Take care. And we'll see you next week. Okay. Next week, special guest on. We're, I'm going to do another one on Monday, actually. So it's just going to be a quick roll in. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.